All right, welcome back everybody. So if you've watched a previous video that I did on brewing a Belgian quadruple with Christmas spices, I'll leave the link right up here. Uh, that is this beer. If you watched that video, I hope you noticed that I mentioned that the Saf Brew T58 Dry Ale Yeast is rumored to be the same exact strain that Chimay, the legendary Travis brewery, uh, uses in their beers. So, naturally being curious, I figured, well, why don't I, you know, run a comparison between that same quad and Chimay's quad. So this is the legendary Chimay Grand Reserve, uh, or also known as Chimay Blue. Um, that is their quadruple. So, so this beer uh, is widely regarded to be one of the best, if not the actual best, beer in the world that is brewed today. I have had this beer before, and I particularly love it. Um, and when I was having my own quad here, I thought for a bit that I tasted some, maybe some similarities. Not 100% sure, since I haven't had this in a bit. So I figured it'd be kind of neat to just see how they compare. Um, so, so full disclaimer, first of all, I am not in any way suggesting that my beer is even close to the level of Chimay. These guys have been brewing beer for hundreds of years. They have actually perfected that process. I have literally just made my first quad. There is no way that my beer is going to even be in the same ballpark of quality. What I really want to get out of this video is a comparison between the two, just to see what the differences are. Anyway, uh, with that out of the way, I'm gonna go ahead and pour both of these beers. So on my left, your right, we have my Christmas quad, which is called Santa Never Left Belgium. It comes in at about 9.6% ABV, um, and I believe that is, yeah, 28 IBUs. Uh, and here we go. Leave a little bit left in the bottle because I poured a little hard. All right, and on my right to your left, we have the Chimay Blue, which comes in at about, I believe it is 9% ABV. Um, does not give a uh, description of the IBUs, but that's fine. Man, that's some strong carbonation. Alright, so again, that's also a very highly carbonated beer, so um, both of these are going to have kind of a ridiculous amount of head. Okay, so uh, once again, on the left you have the Chimay, and on the right we have my quad. Holding them up to the light, you can see that they are almost identical in color, uh, which I'm really impressed by. You've got that really, really deep red, very clear, clean looking beer on both cases. Uh, so. I'm kind of pumped about that to personally see that my brew actually achieved the exact same color. Uh, so, well, okay, so color of the beer is quite similar, uh, but next up we see that the color of the head is actually quite different. On mine, we have a darker head uh, that's more of a tan, light tan kind of head, where the Chimay is actually a quite, quite light, almost white head. Uh, secondly, the head on the Chimay is actually staying put much longer than the head on mine. Mine still has decent head retention, hasn't gone away, keeps a small, um, I'd say, yeah, half a pinky's worth of head on it, whereas the Chimay clearly has like two inches of head. So, um, their head retention is far superior to mine. No big surprise there. So the next category of comparison is aroma. So first of all, mine. So I'm getting very strong notes of pear um, and a decent whiff of cinnamon, as well as a little bit of a kind of, uh, I, I almost want to say cherry, like a dark kind of sweet cherry. It's close enough. Pretty strong caramel blast uh, coming out of this as well. Um, and kind of a whiff of, of booze. I mean, it is a 9.6% beer, so it's not to be unexpected. Nothing that smells bad though. All right, and the Chimay. The Chimay smells quite different. The Chimay, oh, how do I describe that? The Chimay smells significantly sweeter. Um, we've got... Oh, man. We've got gingerbread. <laughs> I want to say that that's gingerbread. Apricot. 
and that's about as much as I can get out of that. It does not have the boozy note that mine has. However, it does not also have the same spice palette that my best. All right. Next up is the uh, the mouthfeel of the beer. Very effervescent. Um, the body is a bit thick. Uh, the mouthfeel is a little bit heavy. Uh, however, it is not too heavy. Uh, doesn't leave too much um, of a uh, coating on the tongue. It's just kind of a straightforward. Uh, yeah, that's just not not too heavy that it takes away from the style, but a little heavier than I was looking for. I was kind of hoping that this would be a, kind of a, a lighter body beer, but that's okay. Um, it is still indeed quite effervescent, quite well carbonated. Um, and I like it. Yeah. Not too complicated, not as light as I was hoping for, but uh, still overall not too terrible. As for the Shimei, So, yes, okay, Chimay is, um, the Chimay is ever so slightly lighter body. Also, it's a fantastic tasting beer, uh, but I'm talking about body right now. It's not as aggressively carbonated, it, it seems. Um, so as far as the head retention goes, that comes from their malt quality and the proper mash that they used for this. Not necessarily from having an abundance of, uh, of priming sugar. It's very smooth, it's very delicate. Um, again, I mean, if I were to compare the two, this would very clearly win, but not to be comparing quality because I cannot win. Okay, and then the next category um, is going to be flavor. So, hmm. all right. So the flavor is uh, quite smooth. The pear aroma that you get uh, transfers into the flavor. It's a very strong malty backbone. A very strong. Um, not a bready kind of malty, but more of a uh, sweet caramel kind of malt that's nicely balanced out by a substantial portion of bitterness. Um, there's no hop bitterness. This is not a hoppy beer. I honestly think if there were hop flavor detectable in it, it would be kind of nasty. But the dark candy sugar that I put into this uh, imparts an almost molasses-like uh, flavor to this. As well as the spices, which are coming through quite nicely at this point, now the cinnamon and the ginger up front, which are most apparent, um, there is a good helping of nutmeg in there too, which is actually starting to come through. Um, I probably could have dialed that back a bit. Now the Chimay, I'll, pref I'll preface this with, is as far as I know, an unspiced beer. It doesn't have those Christmas spices that I threw into mine. It's got a delicate, almost cardamom-like flavor. It has a very, very soft uh, aftertaste on the back of your tongue that uh, comes through as a very, uh, almost powdery cardamom kind of flavor. It's very, very hard to describe, um, but it's incredibly different than this, and it's not different in a bad way. Um, but it's just totally different. It's just very unique flavor. I would say the Chimay tastes much more delicate than my own. Hmm. I think there's ginger in this. I'm not 100% sure. I clearly didn't use the same malt or spice spill that they did, um, nor the same mash schedule for a fact they do uh, step mashes and decoction mashes all the time. I use a single infusion mash. Nothing wrong with either method, but that is a method to produce some of the better flavors that they create in their beers. It's an 
excellent beer. This is also an excellent beer for what I produced. Um, I would say it's definitely one of my best beers, if not my actual best beer, um, which is why I'm talking about it. But it's uh, it's a much heavier beer, it seems, than that one. Which is unfortunate. The magic of a Trappist beer and the reason why they make such excellent and well-regarded beers that are world renowned is their ability to take such a crazy huge beer with an incredibly large malt bill, an incredibly complex uh, array of ingredients, and a relatively high in alcohol, um, and you know, just end up with this incredibly delicate and light tasting glass of deliciousness. Um, it's just an incredible beer. Every time I drink a Chimay, I'm always very satisfied by the beer and just I, I end up getting lost in it because it's so interesting. Um, but, you know, obviously at the end of the day, I'm not going to be able to come close to that. However, it is really interesting to see the comparison between the two. And it also gives me an excuse to go buy Chimay. One of the coolest things about being a home brewer is that even though I didn't really come close to the level of excellence that Chimay has, um, this cost me um well over ten dollars actually for this 750 milliliter bottle now this is 375 milliliters so you could argue that two of these fits that one so when i brewed this beer the net cost per 375 milliliter bottle was about a dollar twenty uh and i made 45 of these so in effect two dollars and forty cents versus like over ten dollars uh for a belgian quad not a bad deal if you enjoyed this video and you enjoy watching me do the crazy things that I do, please consider hitting the like button or the subscribe button. It helps this channel become much more visible to the YouTube community and it helps the channel grow. To my current subscribers, thank you so much. Uh, I really appreciate all the support and all the awesomeness that you guys bring. For the rest of the evening, I'm going to enjoy these lovely beers uh, and continue to probably do a little bit of comparison in my head, but uh, that's just how I operate. Anyway, I hope everybody has a lovely new year and the best to you all in 2019. Cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.